Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to be building a rustic starter home with the help of chisel and bits. I built this bad boy in survival for that added starter home authenticity. In total, it took me around three and a half hours, give or take. Keep in mind that includes resource collection time. In game, it took me around 18 days sleeping every night before mobs could spawn. And uh, not to brag, but I didn't die once. I mean, yeah, I didn't go anywhere dangerous, and yeah, I had an unfair diamond sword advantage, but I'm a survivor, goddammit! Before I take you on the journey of building this house, I thought I'd give you a little tour. As you can see, it's modestly sized, fitting neatly within a 22 by 19 block large space at its property limits. The color scheme is a warm rustic medley of spruce and oak accented by various stones. It features a brick fireplace with four easy to access furnaces, all within quick reach of the front door. You have all your essentials, a crafting table, bed, plenty of storage, and of course, a beautiful potted plant. If you tire of the wonders inside your new home, outside you have a beautiful stable for any animals you may wish to keep. With a sturdy spruce roof, no rainstorm will bother your furry friends. On the other side of the house is a small garden for any immediate food needs. You'll never need to worry about watering them either with a supply always in reach outside your front door. Around the back was left purposely pretty empty, perfect for the entrance to your mines if you so wish. And this can all be yours for the low, low price of watching my video. Seriously, please give me watch time. I dream of being monetized someday. First things first, I gave myself diamond tools to start, seeing as using stone would just add unnecessary grind time on top. I also gave myself a supply of food and a bed, all easy enough to find early game. I just wanted to finish this video before I turn gray. I'm already late uploading. To start the build, you'll want to gather some resources. Cobblestone, spruce, and oak are the three main materials this building will take. Smelt up some smooth stone and turn it into stone bricks. Place two three high stone brick pillars six blocks apart. Connect the two pillars at the bottom with a line of cobble. For the door, you'll want to leave a gap two blocks from the right edge. Oak planks can fill in the rest. This will be the front of your house, so keep that in mind. At this point, we're just blocking out our shape before we start with the chisel and bits. The house's layout is a simple rectangle. The longer side should have eight cobble before the stone brick pillars. Once you have all the walls filled in, you can dig out and replace the floor with spruce planks. Make sure there's a layer of cobblestone underneath your walls. It's going to be showing later and dirt will look bad. Trust me, you'll be glad you did this now. Just, just, just do it. At this point, I was well into my third in-game day of building, but keep in mind a lot of it was spent collecting resources and I slept through the nights. It was time to begin the actual chiseling at this point, so I gave myself a bit big and crafted up a chisel. I wanted to add some definition while keeping the general blockiness of the Minecraft proportions. An easy way to do this is simply shaving a two-bit thick layer off the cobblestone blocks. The oak planks themselves had a four-bit thick layer shaved off, adding additional depth. Do this on the inside as well to keep it consistent. By working in twos, you stay within Minecraft's grid line and it fits more naturally with the surroundings. One thing to note is, I was building this survival so my process was a bit all over the place. I'll be teaching you how to build it in the order I built it with some tweaks so it isn't totally uh, incomprehensible. Anywho, at this point I decided the door could use a bit of definition. I used one half snap to grid sized cubes to give it a nice door frame out of stone bricks. This ties in the stone pillars nicely and breaks up the brown of the planks and door with some gray. You notice the door ate a lot more when it has something to help it pop against the other woods. At this point I figured now was as good a time as any to start blocking out the roof. By having the shape laid out even in just a single row, it helps me get a feel for how the build will look. This was a build I pretty much made as I went, so you'll notice a few spots where I redo work. My idea for the roof has two main points. I want the half slab incline for the main building with that sharp outcrop, but to offset it, there will be the double half slab incline of the stable. This stays within the theme while changing it slightly, which creates an interesting visual contrast. A harsh slope versus a gentle slope. Tall versus short. Not only that, the stable keeps the build feeling balanced instead of having an odd blank space on the taller side. By putting the door off center on the side near the stable, it actually ends up putting the front door more or less in the center of the build. It creates a sense of balance. You don't want your build to feel too heavy or too light on one side because it weakens the overall presentation of your creation. If you want to take your builds that extra level further, I'd highly, highly recommend brushing up on color theory and real life architecture basics. It really does help. Near here, my process was probably at its messiest, but I began to add in the log support pillars to understand how it would look. I used one half snap to grid cubes and added three around the outer corner of the stone pillars. I will admit the tops look a bit wonky seeing as it's within three different blocks, but the tops won't be visible, so it doesn't matter. The log support should meet with the half slab roof, the slabs being turned into chisel blocks when necessary. Make sure to do this for each stone pillar. Around here I added a curved window, which is actually a perfect example of clashing themes. I ultimately removed the window because even with the brick outline, it just looks weird. It doesn't fit with the build. You can find the reason why in simple geometry. I haven't used curved shapes anywhere else in the build. At most, you could argue the cobblestone, and that's a weak argument at best. With the window being the first and only curved shape, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. The rectangle window I change it to later feels more natural because it's sharp angles like the roof and blocks. Once again, it repeats the shape of the door, but for the windows, and it makes the build feel more tied together. Repetition is an important tool in creating a theme, though redundancy is something you'll want to avoid. To frame it in an easy to understand way, think of a human child. Children are 
are very picky, and it usually takes a few exposures to get them used to something. If you feed a child sweets and breads and jams all its life, then try to give it nothing but carrots and lettuce, the kid is going to be disgusted. The kid would fuss less if you introduce the food slowly within multiple meals. Your eyes are the same way. If you have one circle surrounded by a bunch of squares and triangles, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. The only way to alleviate that would be to repeat the curve shape in other places on the build. Repetition. Back at the build, I've decided to abandon the unsatisfying curved window and add in a support beam on the fourth layer of block. It can be a full block because that already adds definition and it will help break up the oak planks. You want the support beam anywhere the wall goes higher than three. Yes, it's in the way of the roof, but thanks to chisel and bits, that's not a problem at all. On the tall side of the building, anything beyond the support beam should once again be the thinner plank walls. For the house's roof, I initially blocked it out in half slaps. On the underside, you'll want to add an additional one half snap to grid cube line to make it look connected. Chisel and bits and half slabs don't play nice, so you'll need to break the slabs you need to chisel, or simply build entirely in chisel and bits. I mostly did it the way I did because I used vanilla blocks as a guideline. The roof should overhang the edges of the stone pillars by a single block on all sides. Make sure to bring said pillars up to meet the roof on the taller side. It's on day 5 of building that I finally get to constructing a stable. I decided to use spruce fences to add a dark contrast to the lightness of the oak walls. Initially, I thought I'd have it coming off the stone pillar, but that was bad for two reasons. One, it just wouldn't work seeing as I needed to add the log support still, and two, visually it feels flatter when it's in line with the edge of the building. By having it come off a single block over, it adds that feeling of depth and looks better from other angles. I connected the fences to the wall by turning the visible face of the cobble into stone brick and returning it to the full block's edge. This actually allows the fence to connect to it like a full block. The block the other fence connects to should have the same thing done to it. These fences should meet up with the two block high stone brick pillars in the corners. The stable is a square with four fences between the corners on every side other than the house's wall itself. For the gate, I removed the fence two blocks from the left. I added a bunch of one half locked grid line cubes of dirt into the grass using replace mode to give it a sort of trodden, lived in feeling. I did leave two full blocks of grass, however, in case you wanted to keep sheep in there. The stable's roof goes up after two half slabs instead of one in a gentler slope and once again has that added line to make it connected at the bottom. Same as the house's roof, it should overhang the stone pillars by one block. So at this point, it all seems pretty cut and dry to you guys, but by day seven, I had actually not finished either the house roof or the stable roof. A huge amount of time was eaten up by resource collection, building and breaking dirt scaffolding, and waiting for things to smelt. I explained it to you all pretty straightforwardly, but in actuality, I was sort of making it up as I went. I jump around from working on the stable to try and finish the roof to working on interior. It was all pretty chaotic and jumbled. I definitely didn't simply go from point A to point B. Back on the topic of interior, it was on day 7 that I decided I'd do my first real work with the interior. I wanted something to split up the space because it felt pretty large and empty. One of the easiest and quickest ways to do this in a rustic build is to add in a support beam. My first instinct was to put the support beam smack down in the middle, but there's a few reasons this wasn't a great idea. First off, the middle was actually between two blocks, which meant if I had stuck with that idea, vanilla blocks wouldn't fit nicely. I wanted the support to hold torches, so that was not an option. Beyond that, it actually looked better being slightly closer to the other end of the room. Symmetry is not the most important thing in a build. Balance is what's important in a build. Symmetry can be used to achieve balance, but symmetry itself does not create balance. Sometimes, having things asymmetrical can make a build look better if you balance things correctly. When I placed the support on the farther side, I mentally dubbed that corner the bedroom. Seeing as I was building this in survival, I actually got to live my build as I made it, which was pretty fun. There was enough room to place the bed and also a double chest beside it. I wanted to use as many vanilla blocks as I could because I wanted this to be a functional base you could actually live in, not some pretty chiseled decorative piece. While building, you want to think about the path you'll be taking through it. To split up space and create a sense of flow, I divide off the left side of the pillar using stone slabs. This helps the room feel less wide open and empty and divvies up the space better. Not only that, but it's functional. By adding the crafting table there, you can just dash in and use it really quick. I lived in the build and I definitely appreciated being so close and quick to use. Initially, I actually had the stone slab counter extend more, but it crowded the entrance so I ultimately removed it. A build being unnecessarily open and empty isn't great, but neither is a cramped build. It was on the beautiful dawn of day 8 that I decided to start on one of the key features of the build, the fireplace. Above all, I wanted functionality, of course. I've been smelting so much at this point, one furnace was not gonna cut it. Put four furnaces in a 2x2 two two shape, one block between it and the front wall of the house. Make sure to harvest plenty of clay and put a pin in it while it smelts. We'll come back to this once the bricks are ready. Day 9, I decided the build could use some more windows. I still hadn't finished the stable roof or even properly started the fireplace, but yeah. Let's make some windows, I guess. 
Out by the stable, there's three cobbled between the stone bricks supporting the fence and the pillar for the corner of the building. In the middle of those three blocks, tag out the bottom oak plank block. Use a one-half snap to grid cube to cut out the bottom half of the plank above it. Give the window a frame four bits thick of stone brick. The sill should be the same stone brick, once again four bits thick. Make sure to extend both the window sill and frame by one bit on both sides. This gives some added depth, which can look good even without shaders. On the back of the house, you can add an identical window. It should have a single block space between it and the end of the bed, and a two block distance on the other side before the wall. The end of my window screen marked the end of the ninth day. Day 10, I decided to work on the roof some more, so I'll be going over my, air quotes, brilliant plans. At this point, the roof was looking like a whole lot of brown, so I decided to break it up using some stone brick. Run a one half snap to grid line row of cubes down the edges, and raise the faces by two bits. It gives the roof some more depth, color, and texture. Hopefully all your clay is done smelting by now because it's time to get started on the fireplace. Replace the eight spruce planks under and around the furnaces with stone. Makes sense to have a less, shall we call it, flammable material where you're cooking things. I removed the furnaces so I could build up the back wall of brick one half snap to grid cubes. Make sure they encase the sides of the furnaces while leaving the front open. It was around this point I ran out of bricks so a lot of time was wasted just hunting for more clay. I hadn't scoped up the area beyond making sure I had a source of both spruce and oak and I ended up bumbling around quite a bit. A lot of time was wasted. Assuming you have the needed brick, make sure you add the one half sized cubes to the outside side of the wall as well. This looks cool, adds a pop of new color, and makes sense function wise so I think it's worth the extra brick. For the chimney, you'll want to encase the top of the furnaces like I've done here, leaving that gap still for the smoke and hot air an actual forge would create. Raise this column up until it meets the roof, and remember to fill in the corners of the fireplace. I started out with them poked out, but decided I didn't like it and changed it. At this point, you should have a solid base to your fireplace, and it's time to start on the chimney itself. Bring that smoke chute up using the one half sized cubes until it's level with the tallest bit of the roof it's touching. Then, go in a layer and make a 2x2x3 box of those one half cubes over top the smoke hole. Using 1 fourth cubes, you can add a lip of brick around on the top of the chimney. If you pop the edges out, it'll look a lot more rounded. Use more 1 4th size cubes to put a ring of stone brick around the base of the thinner part. I also replaced the top of the chimney with some stone brick for that added detail. The last thing to do is poke a 2x2 two two hole of 1 4th size cubes down the center and the chimney is complete. To finish up the fireplace inside, just soften the corners by adding some 1 4th size cubes and take away where needed. I added a 2-bit thick frame of cobble around the stone part of the floor, but that's completely optional. At this point, your fireplace is complete. By the end of day 13, I had finally finished the stables and was looking towards placing a farm. Originally, I thought to place it in the back, but I ultimately didn't after some wasted time terraforming. I figure if I had continued to live there, I would have placed the entrance to my mines in the backyard. Instead, I made it off to the left side of the house using more spruce fences. I made it in sort of a squiggly circle shape rather than being a perfect square because it looks more organic and rustic that way. Just hope the earth, pour some water in a hole, plant your wheat, and your farm is complete. It was on day 15 that I'd finished most of the building and it was really just detailing at that point. I wanted something to go in the corner by the bedroom area, but I was way too poor for a jukebox or armor stand. Instead, I simply made myself a potted plant to go in there. It just cost me some terracotta, dirt, and leaves. To get the shape right, start with a simple cylinder 8 bits tall. Once you have the basic shape and height, you can start fattening up the center to give it that rounded pot look. As you can see, at the bottom I gave it 2 bits before it gets fatter, so it has a gentler curve on the bottom than the top. For the rim of the pot, just add a ring of bits on top and fill it with dirt. The actual plant itself, I decided to go for a a bushy, rounded style. It can be a bit messy because it's leaves, just try to get the general shape right. Build it outside and then move it inside. It's worlds easier. Of course, I had to go and break it while moving. Turns out, hitting undo after placing a chisel block doesn't give you the chisel block back, it just gives you the material back, but the block itself is snapped out of existence. The second bush I built was messier and a bit pointier, but it still got the job done was a good bush. With my lovely pop of greenery added in, I decided the wall was still missing... something. Thankfully, there was just enough room to smuggle in some double chests without feeling crowded. Not only do you get triple the storage, it also fills space nicely. At this point, the sun was setting on the 15th day and finally, Finally, I felt like I was nearly done. I had lived in this little house, had experienced weeks of in-game time toiling away to make it perfect. It was humble, but it was my home my starter home. I could have built this in under an hour in creative, hell, under 30 with an idea already in mind, but in survival, every single block had to be harvested by hand. At this point, with the build nearing completion, I felt oddly accomplished. Day 16 dawned bright and early, only the final detailing left for me to complete. Surely, the last day. Surely, the easiest part. No, of course not. At this point, I knew it was time to add in the windows, so like the complete genius I knew I was, 
I confidently pulled out the charcoal I'd been hoarding until this moment. Want a black block? No problem! I'll just put these nine charcoal together and... And yeah, you vanilla players know exactly what happened. 1.12.2 Vanilla Minecraft, you can only make a coal block, not a charcoal one. So one of the parts I thought would be easiest was now a hassle. Apparently, playing too much modded does have its downfalls. I could have spawned in the coal, of course, like I had the bucket, tools, food, and bed. And some seeds, I didn't want to ruin the surrounding grass, don't hate me. But at this point, I was committed. I wanted that authentic, hand mind coal feeling to do as much as possible without cheats. I wanted to be a true survivor. And it's coal! How hard is it to find coal? Apparently, very. Every time I'd find an exposed bit of coal, I'd triumphantly rush over only to find what you see is literally all you get. This happened twice. I eventually started wandering hopelessly, just randomly mining into hillsides, hoping I'd strike big. The sun began to set. I knew I didn't have much time before I'd have to return to base, so I decided to search near it. At least then, I'd be nearby when it did become night. I mined a random block and found a cave. Jackpot was my first thought, and when I jumped in and came face to face with a creeper, my second thought was, well, shit. My third thought while running like a little female wolf was, yo, is that coal? My surge at its end at long last, I turned and faced down the green monster. With the skills of only a true PvP master, I used the ancient technique of poke it a bit and accidentally let it blow up because you're a dunce. Masterful. I stood there a hero, and when I returned home victorious, it was with coal in hand. You said spoils of war and turned them into a coal block. You'll only need one, thank fuck. By using this material, it'll give the windows a sort of black iron kind of look. First, make the outline as a 2-bit thick frame running along the center line of the sill. In the middle of said frame, make the edge what would be two halves of a window you can open. It should be 2x2 two two bits thick. Then, add two horizontal lines, one on the 8th bit from the top, one on the 8th bit from the bottom. Follow this formula for both other windows, and with that, the windows are finally done. I did do some fiddling around with the fireplace considering adding a grate, but I didn't in the end. While you could still access the furnaces through a grate, it made less sense realism-wise. Unless it was able to be open, which my design wasn't, getting stuff in and out would be actually impossible. For the path, I initially thought of doing a sort of cobble path kind of idea, but I'd trash it pretty quick. It just looked weird. Like, really weird. Maybe adding dirt under it would have made it look better, but as it was, it was just sort of vaguely uncomfortable to look at. Instead, I employed the same tactic used in the stable with the petering up dirt one half cubes. It looks good, in my opinion, like a naturally trodden dirt path, so it tends to be my default in rustic builds. As a final touch to the build, I figured I'd add one of the most essential things, an infinite water source. Even with the river so close, it's still nice not having to hop up and down the hill every time you want a bucket of water. I filled the bottom with stone slabs and added a one bit thin layer of stone to the grass blocks on the side. I then chiseled a full block of stone slab to get the material and ring the pool in one half sized cubes of stone slab. This next step is super optional, but I think it takes it that extra bit further. If you use smooth stone, it actually looks almost identical to the color that splits up the slabs. First, replace the corners with single bits of grass to give a slightly rounded look. Then, use the stone to outline the edges of the new shape. This way, it actually looks like those are the edges of custom cut slabs, rather than having it just cut off halfway through the slab texture. Once you've filled your new pool with water, that's pretty much it. You have yourself a rustic starter home made using chisel and bits and easy to find resources. I hope the video was helpful, it was pretty fun to record. I don't build in survival a huge amount, so it was pretty nice to make a nice cozy starter home. This wasn't a super structured tutorial, seeing as when I build in survival I'm incapable of doing things in order, but hopefully it was easy enough to follow along. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the build in the comments. Let me know what you would have changed to make it more to your personal tastes. Would you like to see more starter homes done with different materials and styles? Feel free to hit that like button, or don't, I'm not your boss. But if I was your boss, I'd tell you to subscribe too. Maybe even share. Crappy jokes aside, congrats if you made it to the end of the video. I hope you're having a good one. Stay safe.